I should Postmate or Instacart food because if I Instacart, I, I currently have no groceries because I got paid yesterday. At the end of every month, I am slowly running out of food to eat and I don't really have anything to make a meal. And if I Instacart food, it's gonna get here in like two hours and I don't wanna wait that long. And if I Postmate food, it's gonna get here in like 20 minutes. But Postmates is such a waste of money and it's usually unhealthy. I'm gonna do it. I just ordered from this place called LA Breakfast Club and hopefully it's good. I've never been there. I just spent like 40 bucks on breakfast. I'm treating myself because my brain hates me today. Usually when my anxiety isn't the best, I try to stay off my social medias and all that. So I'll usually, I don't count YouTube as a social media to watch. What I've been doing for the past 20 minutes is I just watch YouTubers I like because YouTube makes me happy and I'm so thankful for the YouTubers I watch because they lighten my day way more than they know. I'm uploading a YouTube video right now. I actually stayed up until almost 4 a.m. editing and uploading this to then realize this morning I put subscribe first and then it just says thank you so much for watching for 20 seconds and it bothered me. So I fixed it and I'm re-uploading it but it's taking forever. It is currently 9.32. I already knew I was planning this video today and it was going to be like my morning routine and then it would be like anxiety edition and I was gonna share all of the little things I do to help me with my anxiety, to help me not like fall into my anxiety slump and then not get anything done. But I woke up with an extreme amount of anxiety today so now you're gonna see it hands on. So it's gonna be more how I get through, oh my god, I'm literally on the verge of crying and I don't want to film it. <laughs> Anxiety and feeling depressed all the time is, oh my god, stop crying. <laughs> it is a huge part of my life. I have had anxiety since my beginning memories. I don't remember a time where I have not had anxiety. I'll do a more in-depth video on my anxiety and how it started and all of that if you guys want that, like more of like a sit down, like maybe I'll like make coffee and just like hang out with you guys, but just like a little preview. I think it mostly started when I was like five, like when I started going to school. I had these ticks. They were just little ticks. That was one thing. Then my parents would have to pick me up from school every single day because I told the teachers my stomach hurt. I do remember my stomach actually hurting, but I remember my teachers almost me thinking like they don't believe me. I'm about to start my period also and I can't stop freaking crying but i remember as a child i just felt like something was wrong with me and i didn't know how to explain it to my parents i didn't know how to put it into words like how i felt all the time i've blocked out like a lot of the memories from when i was a child i don't know why but a majority of my memories are based around my anxiety attacks that i used to have so i have an extreme fear of throw up and i know a lot of people think that's like the funniest thing ever it's a phobia i know it's a if somebody even mentions that their stomach hurts, I need to get away from them. It's way better now. I've learned a bunch of coping skills and I've gotten better with it. That started around seven and then my anxiety started to stem off my phobia throw up. It was just like a ping pong ball going back and forth, like being anxious, the anxiety hurting my stomach, me being anxious and freaking out from my stomach hurting. I remember I mentioned my anxiety in another video and I mentioned that I hate when people come for me because I haven't been fully diagnosed and I got quite a few really mean messages and you know I, I try and step back and put myself in other people's shoes and yes it is very very annoying just it makes me really mad when people like use anxiety as i don't even know what they use it as it's like a trend where a lot of people think it's like quirky it's not cute it has made me not do so many things in my life so for people to come at me and tell me that i'm faking it just made me go into a whole entire crisis and i had a whole entire mental breakdown whenever i say mental breakdown i actually do mean i had a full entire mental breakdown i have them quite often it's really bad 
my mom has urged me to do videos on anxiety because she thinks that I could help people and I could share my experiences and be really raw with people instead of putting this fake happy face on all the time which is just very unrealistic for real life and I told her I was like I don't want to do it until I'm diagnosed she was like you don't need to be diagnosed I'm like <laughs> I told her, I was like, my generation is very much, if you're not diagnosed, we don't want to hear about it type of deal. And after I came out with the video where I talked about anxiety a little bit, I screenshotted one of the comments and I sent it to my mom and I was like, this is exactly why I will not do a video on anxiety. And it was just everything I just touched on, just saying like, you shouldn't talk about anxiety if you're not diagnosed. And my mom was just like, that's insane. Because my mom knows I have anxiety. Everybody in my life knows I have anxiety and then my mom told me she was like I mean you technically have been diagnosed and I'm like um what uh, I did not know that but I guess when I started developing little ticks when I was little like I had little ticks where I would go like <clears throat> where I would just do that like all the time. I had like a swallowing one. I didn't know. My parents took me. We used to have like a doctor that would check our whole entire family and he was like, oh yeah, she probably just has anxiety. So technically, I have been diagnosed a really long time ago. I know I always get the question, well, you're 20. Why haven't you gone to the doctor? A lot of the time of when I was, I'm pretty sure it was middle school and like half of high school, we didn't have insurance. Going to a doctor was really expensive and it just didn't really seem like it was needed because I didn't need to be diagnosed because I knew I had it, if that makes sense. But fast forward to about a year ago when right before COVID started, I was at like probably the best I have ever been in my entire life. I like really thought about it and I was like, I really want to go to the doctor and get this figured out because I also think I have a few other issues that can't really self-diagnose because I don't know everything on them and I just want to go to the doctor for them. I was like, I really want to go get diagnosed just to like feel validated because my brain does so many things where I'm just like that can't be normal and when I talk to other people and they're like oh I don't do that you do that and then I'm like oh I, I thought everybody did that no Kaylee everybody doesn't overthink every situation a million times and then obsess over it that's not normal also, I have an extreme fear of the doctors. I hate the doctors. I only went to the doctor when I needed to, like when I need to get my shots and stuff and like a physical. Don't be like me. Go to the doctor and get checked out because I'm trying to get better at it because at the end of the day, your health is the most important. Your mental health, your physical health, all of it, go to the doctor. Every time I would try and plan to go to the doctor, I would have a full-blown panic attack and I'd just be like, nope, not worth it. But finally, when I came to terms and I was like, you just need to fight through it. You need to go to the doctor. You need to figure out all of your issues so you can try and resolve them the best that you can. COVID hit. <laughs> you couldn't go to the doctor unless like you had COVID. They would tell you just stay home. So I'm like, this is the worst time. And then it was just a spiral. My anxiety got way worse. And here I am today. Last few months, I've really been working on myself. And every single month around my period, I just fall back into a hole that I just dug myself out of and it just keeps happening over and over again and I really want to change that so I think I am gonna make a doctor's appointment soon because I can go to the doctors again but yeah I thought this video might be helpful for some people because I've been dealing with this for my whole entire life I've learned some things on the way I want to start doing more videos like this showing my like actual life I never want to be like that fake youtuber that isn't actually them but like pretends to be authentic I don't know that's just not me and I'm really bad at faking things like if I'm in a bad mood I have filmed like one or two videos where I've just like really pushed through it and I've been in a bad mood and I've gotten comments that are like are you okay because I can't I cannot hide it but yeah I know that was a lot and I kind of just rambled but I thought that that would put it into perspective a little bit for people that don't know I have anxiety or new people that have never seen me before <laughs> hey I'm going to finish uploading my video you know stuff like the description and all that Food acquired. A little bowl of fruit. Ooh, that looks really good. I got an omelet and I added potatoes, spinach, other stuff that I can't remember. Avocado on top and it came with tater tots. 
along with my anxiety i have felt extremely depressed recently this is a newer add-on to my life because i've gone through spurts where i've been like extremely sad but i would never call it depression it's weird because it's, it's a completely different feeling than my anxiety and then one thing that comes along with all that is recently I have not been eating and I've not told anybody that except for my mom and Tyler. I'm still eating it's just I'm not hungry like my body isn't telling me that I'm hungry my whole entire life whenever I'm sad I do not have an appetite I know some people are the complete opposite and they love to eat when they're sad I have no appetite when I'm sad I hate I, I can't eat that's like my last thought I don't know why recently I have found myself like at the end of the day and I'm like super lightheaded and I'm like holy crap like I didn't eat anything and I completely forget like I don't even realize it. it's not intentional I've really been putting timers on my phone for like breakfast lunch and dinner and snacks in between my thing stopped filming this is very weird for me to talk to a camera about my anxiety because i don't know it just seems wrong it just seems like wrong like i'm not supposed to be doing this and i don't know why because it's literally not <laughs> okay i'm gonna eat my breakfast are like one of those things that no matter what will make me feel the tiniest bit better. Also, I can confidently say that my anxiety is not as bad as it was when I first woke up. When I first woke up, I had that like icky, like panicky feeling and that kind of went away. And I'm telling you, it's because I've been like up. As soon as I got up and I started doing things and kind of like distracting myself from my own thoughts, I instantly felt better. Today I'm gonna drink a little bit of chlorophyll because I literally only got like four hours, maybe a teensy bit more than that of sleep. Chlorophyll makes me a little bit more energized and I'm actually going out today, crazy. So I need a little bit of energy because I don't really wanna take a nap today. I just wanna go to bed earlier because when I take a nap, then I can't go to bed until like 3 a.m. So I'm just gonna like fight through the tiredness. One thing that always makes me feel better when I am anxious or or just like not feeling it. I do a bunch of self, oh, I literally just spray that directly on my chest. I do a lot of self care because it keeps me busy and um, who doesn't like self care, you know? I definitely have those days where I'm not motivated to get up to do self care because that's the problem is I'm not motivated. I know a lot of people ask questions to people who seem very motivated how do you stay motivated because staying motivated for a lot of people is like one of the hardest things ever recently i've just been really thinking about my future which i usually hate doing but i've been trying to like rewire my brain into thinking more positively about things and when my anxiety starts to get really bad i start looking at everything in a negative way and whenever that happens i feel like negative things come my way things just don't go my way and i swear it's like the energy you put out is what you're going to receive back so if you are an overall positive person you're putting positivity out and you're putting that goodness out I feel like you're gonna get it in return and whenever I do that one I'm just in a better mood and I don't sulk and I don't victimize myself it's probably one of the main things that I really really dislike about my mental illness issues is how negative I become because it's just it's just nasty it's just it's a gross feeling that has been the main thing I've tried to fix and I feel like recently it's been a little bit better but it can be really hard I feel like it's easier to be negative I don't know sometimes I feel I feel like it's easier to sit there and do nothing and hate the world and that is my TED talk I hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> my room isn't messy right now it's just like very unorganized and I need to put things back in their places that's more of an afternoon thing and I think this video is kind of going to come to an end I didn't incorporate in this video because honestly I really was not feeling up to it sometimes I will work out in the mornings we have an electrical bike and I'll bring it in here and I'll do that I do some ab workouts and some butt workouts and and this morning I was gonna just stretch but I'm running late 
because I still need to pack for my boyfriends because he's gonna pick me up. Something I've done for like most of my life actually, I really enjoy making lists. I still have quite to do before my boyfriend gets here. He's gonna get here at two and it is 12.50. So, I need to hurry up. I love doing these in the mornings, but I know I'm gonna have to clean or get certain things done so I don't forget things because I have the worst memory ever. When I write it down, it makes a mental list and it makes me remember things better. I need to throw away all the trash in my room and then I need to put all of the cups that are in my room in the sink because I'm going to my boyfriend's and they can't stay in here. Oh my god, that's getting really red. I sprayed that detangler like straight on my chest by accident earlier and it is so itchy and I need to wipe it off but I don't want to get up. I need to make my bed. I need to pack. I need to get ready. Okay, not the longest list. I just need to write that stuff down so I don't like forget to do things. Ignore this. I don't know why it's so red. My skin is really sensitive but holy crap. I am going to end this video. If you want to see more of these types of videos, like days in my life, just let me know. If you got to this point of the video, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I love you so much. And I will see you guys in the next one. So, bye! <laughs>